But dirt, what it do? It's your boy M. Dot. You are now in Step Into the Light, Step Up to the Mic podcast. You know, you got your boy M. Dot, and you got my guy Smooth on the other side. Smooth, what's good, brother? Yeah, but dirt, what it do, people? How y'all living, man? Chilling, 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 man. Chilling. You know what I mean? Word taking up. it, taking it day by day, my brother. Taking it day by day. Yeah, I feel you. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So um, should I make up a cool, you know, nickname too? You, you know might as well. Like, I mean, yeah, go ahead, you know, brother. Y'all you know dot and smooth. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I gotta come up with something too. I got a couple. Know yet. I got a couple off top. You feel me? MLK. <laughs> um, I, I mm. thought that would, you know, I oh, thought powerful. that that no, suits you. Powerful. You know, Nick Cannon. Um, I knew he was going. I knew he was gonna go there. I see. That's I true. see the resemblance. I see the resemblance. Yeah, nah, don't don't even. I, I see the resemblance. Podcast so fast, man. Don't be hey. a fool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. 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 Hey, look how do you even know who Nick Cannon is? That's crazy, bro. I see. I thought you would have reached your peak when Drumline was out, right? Because that was, bro. you know, <laughs> it's that, that dude. I think you it's had back. braids at the time too, if I'm not mistaken. I did. Yeah. Nah, mm-hmm. it's it's back, man. <laughs> nah, that's what's up, yo. So uh, for everybody, this is um, this is Mr. Andrew Watkins. All right, now um. Not only is that my 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 brother, right, but he has been a uh, mentor and um, definitely a role model, right? And um, you know, we brought him on, brought him on to the show today um, to go over mental health in the black community, right? Um, so, Drew, you want to go ahead and uh, let the folks know who you are, your credentials, sure. all that good stuff. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, what's good, peoples? My name is Andrew Watkins. Um, I am uh, the better looking brother uh, between uh, Smooth and uh, my older brother Q. Um, and I'm, I'm He's tripping, super yeah. hyped. Hold on, don't come on, man. This is my, <laughs> come on. Yo, let that man get through the <laughs> intro, brother. You, know, <laughs> man. Let him you gave me the mic. You know what I I'm saying? I, I had so, to talk my shit. My fault. Right. Anyway, <laughs> um, I am. Uh, I am a licensed clinical social worker. Um, that's my um, therapy <laughs> credentials. I'm currently employed as a clinical social worker at the illustrious North Carolina a t State University, uh, all the way over here in North Carolina, uh, where I work. I provide therapy in their counseling center. Uh, I'm also a uh, licensed elder, um, so I've been pastoring uh, at my home church for about the last 12 years. Uh, been in the game for a minute. So uh, wow. you know, it's been an wow. interesting experience. And uh, in the process of pastoring and doing therapy, I created a uh, support group called The Cypher that uses hip hop um, as a, uh, a vehicle to educate participants about basic mental health concepts. So. Uh, just analyzing lyrics, listening to music, making connections between content in the music and, you know, just different mental health uh, topics that's discussed and kind of using that as a way to help folks understand their own mental health journey and uh, how they can use hip hop as a way to manage their their emotions um, better. So um, that's me. That's dope, man. Um, hey, let me let me just say this real quick. I, my bad, Small. I'm going to cut you off. Nah, you good. I- Wow! Wow! This your credentials speak for themselves, brother. I'm, I was blown by I was blown away by it by your introduction. Oh wow! You know what I mean, like you know what I mean with the with being you know a black man in America working in social work, and you know pretty much utilizing what you've learned in school and, and your experience and 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 aiding the black community. I'm I am shocked, brother. I am shocked, and I am <laughs> and also with the pastor. I would have ne- I would have never guessed. Really, I, yeah. I would have, I would have never guessed. But you know what they say: never judge a book by its cover. So I, it wasn't me judging you or anything like that. I, oh no, no, no like I you know, I mean, it's like 
religion is such a lost art when it comes to you know Christianity and we and mm. you know speaking on that, like it's not it's not it's not in the same realm as it once was. So, so that's oh, wow, that's amazing. I, that's all I had to say on that one. I, I handed over this move with everything as a wow. Nah, like nah, that's real rap, yo. And it's crazy because like um you know I, I've I've always had this this idea of my brothers right, and and when it comes to comparisons to historical figures, you know what I'm saying, right? So Drew has always been MLK. That's Martin Luther King right there, bro. Mm. I'm telling you, mm. all right? He's going to church. He's going to have his Sunday's best on, yeah, okay? Yeah. Mm. And he's going to be out there marching with the folks, all right? Now, our oldest brother, that's that's Malcolm X all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he in the window not, with the, the 16. You know yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Q not playing that, bro. He he gonna yeah. let you know. And then you got me. It's you know you might you might get Huey on a on a good day. You feel right. me? Um, right. You know, but but you know, so, but um, man. So that's dope, bro. So the cipher, right? You started that back when. So it's crazy. I actually started the cipher uh, when I was finishing up my master's uh, at A T in twenty like fourteen. Okay. Um, and then I started to actually facilitate the group when I started working at a in 2018. So uh, it's been a it's been a couple years in the making. OK, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So what was the inspiration behind it? So, you know, I've always been a broke rapper, um, you know, I was just kind of uh, a family. Um, I wouldn't say a family tradition, but I come from a family of creatives. Uh, so. I think a part of that got honed in the church, um, just being around live instrumentation, um, even the cadence of some gospel songs, I think, even preaching. Uh, this is something that I plan on like doing more research on and, and kind of creating more like legitimacy around it. But I think the black preaching tradition um, probably birthed emceeing, uh, especially if you think about like uh, how black preachers kind of like blend with the organ accompaniment, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And just kind of yeah. that music. Uh, same thing with hip hop, you know, the way an artist rides on the beat uh, is very, very similar, um, just in like the structure of it. So I think it really got birth there. And then of course, I just kind of fell into rapping very young and I've, I've been doing it for a minute and was trying to figure out how I could connect my passion for the art form with my, my work as a clinician. And, you know, one day it, it kind of just clicked and it's been rolling from there. Yeah, man. Now that's hard, bro. That's a dope concept right there. Man, you had something you wanted to say, bro? Yeah, Drew, quick question, brother. You mm -hmm. know, you work in a field of social work. Do you think that us as a community, you know what I mean, are we re reflected enough in that field to the point where if it's another person of another ethnic group that'll come and say, hey, we can help you, it's a little bit distrust, you know, because of our past history and everything like that. Do you think there's a lot of black women, black men in that field kind of leading the way and, and, and going towards that goal of, I'm right, gonna help our community with that mental health treatment and you know get us right? Or do you think that that's kind of a lost art form in the sense of there's not enough of us in that field. It's kind of, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm of a dying breed, so to speak. So as a, as a black male social worker, I'm definitely a, a, a rarity. Um, it's, it's not many of us. Um, and so I don't know if I would describe us as a dying breed as I would just, um, you know, it's just, it's just not many. Um, and, and that's because of a lot of different reasons, social work, any mental health field in general, social work, psychology, psychiatry, uh, all of these fields, but particularly social work is dominated by white women. Um, and so that is, uh, one, it's a detractor to folks in the community when it comes to like people seeking out therapy, uh, particularly for social workers. But then it also turned a lot of black folks away from wanting to pursue the field uh, just because it's, you know, it's dominated by this, this, uh, this certain community of folks. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think uh, we, we definitely not deep um in in the area and so one of a part of the reason why i thought incorporating hip-hop into my work as a clinician uh was it also could make the feel more attractive to folks who may not traditionally been interested in 
like participating in, in therapy. Well, now you see this black man um, advocating on, about using hip hop, right, um, in, in this work. And I think it could help, you know, folks be more like interested in pursuing the field. Yeah, most definitely. Cause yeah. it, and that and that was something that I was gonna ask you, right? Like, how has uh, we'll, we'll go with recently, right? Like, what's a, what's a good example of how hip hop has influenced or been a driving uh, force behind, you know, getting the culture, our culture, to go out and you know get get help when it comes to mental therapy. Man, uh, it's so many examples, but the first one that comes to mind, KLD, um, J Cole's. Uh, I guess this was two albums ago, mm-hmm. or maybe just one. Um, but yeah, like that, that the content in that album was super focused on mental health treatment, uh, on substance abuse in the Black community. <clears throat> um, and so I think albums like that have really played a role in getting the conversation started. But in so many artists' music, in Ellie Chopper, like if you just listen to some of his his songs, like it's super like vulgar and and aggressive, yes. But man, this dude is really sad too. Like yeah. doing a lot of singing, uh, just just talking about how uh, isolated he is and how he much he can't trust people. Um, so even in what we would consider our most ratchet um, hip hop music, is still so much content about where these people are emotionally and spiritually we just got to be more more willing to to hear it so i think it's it's in there we you know what i'm saying we just gotta um be patient enough to find it yeah that's real because maybe maybe that's my problem i don't have the 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 patience to you know, digest some of those lyrics that these young rappers yeah. is talking about. Because I mean, you know, with, with with rapping, right? These people are giving you a version of themselves, right? Whether right. it's you know legit or not, some mm-hmm. truth is going to come out. Yeah. Um, but I, I I found that interesting though because the cat that you mentioned, right? I felt the same way about uh, XXX uh, Temptation, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But he had a lot of you know he had a lot of problems, right? But he. So did. You know, he voiced that in his music. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, you you understand what that person's going through, but it's like, dang, you know? Mm-hmm. How many other rappers is actually out here doing that? And But actually, you know, um, getting people to want to go out and get checked for stuff like that. It's crazy, yeah, X man. Is, X is an interesting character because he's a part of what was called um, the emo rap movement so Mm. uh, soundcloud rappers um and and they kind of built their reputation on being suicidal um and and getting high all the time um and and so yes it's like a super marketable um uh, content where people are like drawn to it but it's also like reflective of what they really going through And, and it's a cry for help in a lot of instances um, and unfortunately, folks ain't really getting the help. So X dies tragically. Um, Juice World um, dies from a drug overdose. Mm-hmm. Mac Miller, same thing. Um, same thing, man. Rest in peace, man. Uh, it, it, it points to a, a more of an underlying issue that don't get <laughs> the, discussed as much as it should. Yeah, that's real, man. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, yo. Um, moving forward do you do you ever think that these like these record companies and all that stuff will actually start hiring therapists or you know psychologists to help them with their 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 you know their investments that's a great question uh i hope it's some it's some record execs on the call because uh listen y'all need to hire some of us to to come out there but no I, i i don't know if that will happen because um, companies benefit, have benefited off of Black death um, for so long um, that investing in the, the mental health of their uh, artists would contradict what they profit off of. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know, but I do think that it's a lane uh, out there for clinicians to be able to connect with artists, I think about what I do with the cipher and how it's fine-tuned for creatives. Uh, so a part of what we do is we 
I, I may identify whatever, let's say we're talking about anger for any given uh, uh, session. Uh, they come in, sit down, uh, and we kind of just give a brief overview of what anger is, how it plays out in different people's lives. Then mm -hmm. we listen to two songs where I've like taken the lyrics, annotated them. So I've like gone through, marked them, uh, wrote in notes that kind of point to different mm -hmm. uh, examples of anger in, in the lyrics. Uh, we listen to the song, we analyze the lyrics, we talk about how the artist is expressing those emotions in the music. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we talk about maybe some healthy coping strategies, stuff that you can use to process your anger whenever you feel that. At the end, we actually engage in rapping. So cut an instrument on and we freestyle. Um, and that's a twofold kind of like strategy. On the one hand, I love rapping and, and the people that would be in that group would also be super fans of rapping. So we get a chance to do that. But yeah. secondly, it gives you a chance to participate in a healthy coping strategy that's relevant to your cultural experience. Um, and so it's really killing two birds with one stone and making this, this therapy work 10 times more effective because people are doing stuff that they really enjoy doing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it, can, it that makes it perfect for artists because now you know, they get to, to use their craft in a way that also enhances their, their mental health. Mm -hmm. Wow. Joe, Drew, I got a question for you, brother, because I've been, mm -hmm. I've been pondering this for a while. So, you know, you come from the pastoring background, you licensed clinician. Do, do yeah. you get a lot of kickback? Because, you know, I come from a Christian household, very, very religious. You know, the one thing they used to tell me growing up was, you know, you ain't anxious, you ain't depressed, just go pray. You're not praying hard enough. Yes, do you uh, get do you get a lot of pushback, you know, because you are a pastor, right? Do you get a lot of pushback from the church community or the other elders in the in the church in regards to you know what you're doing? Or is it something where it's like, oh, these kind of these things kind of go hand in hand? Like you need God in your life, but you also need, you know, if you need some medication or a therapy that kind of works hand in hand. What what's your thoughts on that? So you I don't get a lot of um pushback like directly like um our church is a little more it has some elements of progression um have a younger pastor we have a younger congregation um so in in the work that i do with mental health like it's relatively well received um and because the trend in the country is like a mental health and, and self-care uh, it's more like Okay, we, we cool with you talking about that. Um, but when it comes to kind of like just the nitty gritty, um, having support behind some of the mental health initiatives and just people like uh, just being receptive to like ongoing discussions mm -hmm. about mental health and uh, how like certain biblical characters were really dealing with depression or mm -hmm. hell, maybe even bipolar disorder. I think about... Mm -hmm you know, some of the, uh, the scriptures on like Jeremiah or uh, Ezekiel, like they was really going through it. David, um, like if you read through the Psalms, this man was like, was, was going through it. Um, so, you know, it's harder for people to like um, digest that because in a lot of like circles, um, Christian circles, you know, it's been this idea of like, if you just pray hard enough, Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and you believe hard enough, you're not going to experience no mental health issues. Um, and you should, and if you are experiencing them, mm -hmm. then you, your faith is weak. Um, and that's crazy. And that's crazy. Cause I, I had a conversation with my mother about that. And I'm like, that, I was like, that doesn't, I was like, not, it's not like, how can you judge my faith if I'm experiencing mental health issues or what, how did that judge my faith? I still go to church. I, I read right. the Bible. I pray. How does that have any type of bearing on my on my faith? It could be something I'm dealing with stress or whatever the case may be. How does that have any bearing on my faith? Like I never I never understood that when it came to that. And it's just like it's it's, it's crazy. It's this kind of name and they claim it. Uh uh if you believe hard enough theology that is really damaging, man. It's really turning mm -hmm. a lot of people away from the church, it's making people uh lack trust in like the, the the authenticity of the the teachings and the doctrines um and it's just 
inaccurate. You know, like life is hard. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. people go through shitty experiences, mm. period. And, mm. and when we do, it generates some really strong emotions that no matter how much praying I'm doing, I'm still going to be sad. Mm. I'm still going to have resentment. I still ain't going to want to <laughs> fool with you. Uh, and it just, it, it requires time, uh, a strong support system and a clear understanding of the way that, that guy works for us to be able to like navigate those experiences appropriately. And, and this crazy thing, I'm going to just tell a little anecdote real quick, right? Mm-hmm. So when my son was born, my son's five months old, right? When he was born, right? Yeah. It was just immense anxiety to the point where I wasn't sleeping for days because this yeah. was a, I just brought a human in this world. I left the hospital. I ain't got none of that comfort. No nurses, no doctors checking on me. It's me and my wife by myself, COVID. Right. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, yo, I cannot sleep. And I'm th- worried about this little dude next to me. God forbid something happens to him, I'm going to lose my stuff. So I had a conversation with my mother. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm feeling anxious. Like, you know, can, can you give me some words of encouragement? Like, what's going on? Matthew, you're not praying hard enough. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go read Proverbs. Go read Job. <laughs> Go read Psalm 121, Daniel. Yes, sir. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, Ma, I thank you. I love I love that. But right. I-, I need something else. And then when yeah. I when I went to the doctor, I was like, yo, is this normal? The doctor was like, you're fine. It's it's normal. It'll pass on its own. And God willing it did. But yeah, yeah. It- it's just at that moment, I needed something else other than go read the Bible. Go I needed some other type of comfort. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's just mm-hmm. and I-, I I agree with you 100 percent Like like when you're in that space and you got these issues, you got these demons that you're struggling with. Sometimes you kind of need that. All right, I, I I I love the church talk, I love the Bible talk, but I need something else. Right. Something needs to come on top of that. Like nothing wrong with that, but I need something on top of that. Like it's yeah. like when you when you eat Sunday, when you eat Thanksgiving dinner, you know you get the turkey. The turkey might be a little too dry. Right. You had a little gravy <laughs> on it. You know what I mean? So. It's I'm real, just, man. I'm just saying, man. Like that, that was real. good, bro. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just I saying, you know what I mean? If we be, if we be, if we being honest, you know, this M Dine smooth, you know what I mean? Your little brother right there. We be, if we being honest, you know, this like I, we need a little extra sometimes. And I think yeah. in the black community, we deal with a lot of things that kind of are detriment to how we how we view certain things. So if we go on medicine, we we go on medication, we think that oh, well, this medication might give me X, Y, and Z because of what. The Tuskegee experiment has shown me mm-hmm. in regards to, all right, the U.S. government was injecting us with syphilis, with syphilis right. was unknowing to them. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I think that it's okay to have that understanding of, all right, the U.S. government was bad. Yes, they did nasty things. Yes, they did all this thing. They, they infected us. Yes. But nowadays, I hope I'm being optimistic and um, not as naive or gullible, but I hope that those things are not continuing today. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Go I just um, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say I I ain't, I ain't gonna preach. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this real quick though, because it's really in the line of what you're saying. Um, so I've been uh, teaching out of Colossians in our study at church, and it's a part in Colossians where um, Paul is talking about circumcision, and right. he's like, you know, just kind of talking about how uh, circumcision was a foreshadowing of how uh, Christ was going to remove the sin away from humanity and reconnect humanity back to God. Um, But the reason why he used circumcision in the Old Testament was because it was a common cultural practice that uh, Northern African people used, right? Like that that wasn't even religious initially. Like it was just Mm. something that they had begun Mm. doing In Egypt, they used circumcision. God recognized that. He was like, you know what? I'm going to use this practice that y'all already use. Um, I'm going to put my divine spin on it. And now it's going to like show this covenant that I now have established between y'all. But he was very intentional on using a cultural practice because God knew that that would be relevant to our lived experience. Um, So I I think about that in terms of therapy. I think about Mm -hmm. that in terms of uh, uh, hip hop, like God allowed these things to be created. And I think uh, he, he also allows them to be uh, vehicles to connect us back to him. Um, but we got to start to think outside of the box about like stuff just having to be a certain kind of way and be willing to like really like 
acknowledge how this thing could benefit me in a in a whole bunch of different ways. Yo, that's crazy, man. Um, and and just <laughs> you, cause you just dropped some gems. Um, mm. so mm. thank you for that. Um, just take over the podcast while you're at it. Um. <laughs> Nah, yo, so that, but nah, that's crazy because if we really, it, like, think about it. If half the world were to start thinking like that, how much thing, how much stuff do you think would change drastically? Crazy. It, I think it would, I think it would be a, a, a day and night type of situation. Like with this type of logical thinking, right? When it's like, you can have Christ, you can have God on one side, but you can also have, enjoy your therapy enjoy your hip hop, use those things in tandem to kind of benefit you. I mm-hmm. mean, wh- there's no argument there. There's no one's going to, no one's going to argue because you got both sides now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like people argue when you say, well, I, I go to therapy. Oh, therapy. That's, you should just read your Bible like that. You, right. That's all you need. And it's, it's hard because, you know, in the black community, Christianity is, is so deeply rooted in our lives. So it's something that we hold dear. A lot of people hold that very dear. So mm-hmm. it's hard to break away from that and say, well, you know, research has shown X, Y, and Z. People don't want to hear that. Yeah. They don't, don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that at yeah, all. Sure. But, but when we talk about, you know, when we talk about, I, I'm not I'm not trying to get into church on this, but when we talk about what God has put on earth, like me and Smooth was talking about on the last podcast, when they talk, when we talk about cannabis and we mm-hmm. talk about marijuana, right? You're a licensed clinician. What's your idea and thoughts on med- uh, medical marijuana and the benefits of it? Do you think it's something that's just a phase at this moment, or do you think it's something that can really help us through this day and age when people are dealing with anxiety, uh, uh, panic disorder, depression. Uh, eating, eating disorder, depression, all those things? Do you think medical marijuana has a fit in that, or do you think that those uh, medicines like Prozac, uh, all those different types of me- medications, you know, that's their lane. Medical marijuana has no pl- pl- no place in it. So medical marijuana definitely has a place in alleviating uh, different symptoms of mental health conditions. Um, And and really, without going too far into the the science, and I'm certainly not a, uh, I'm not an expert in in that realm. Um, But what I do know is that there are certain um, neurotransmitters that are released. Neurotransmitters are um, chemicals in our minds, within our bodies that are released whenever we're experiencing certain emotions. So if I'm exposed to having a child, um, there is serotonin, one of the neurotransmitters that's released into our brains that gives us that um, feeling of joy and excitement and love, so on and so forth. There's several different neurotransmitters uh, and medical marijuana, as well as Prozac, as well as uh, Abilify, whatever, psychotropic medication you want to throw out there has these elements inside of them. Um, and so it jumpstarts the release of these neurotransmitters inside of your mind. So I do think that medical marijuana is can be just as effective, if not already is, um, when it comes to managing your mental health. I just think that it has to be done in, in tandem uh, mm-hmm. with other uh, thing so therapy having a strong support system around you uh, being able to like anchor into uh, a, a faith uh, and I ain't even uh, just talking about you got to be a Christian but I think like practicing a faith has benefits to folks mental health uh, all of those things are, are super important when it comes to you know dealing with some of the stuff that we have going on uh, it's just got to be, you know, a, a combination of things. So, so in other words, for the folks that pretty much self-diagnose themselves with depression, anxiety, and all those things, right? Smoking, mm-hmm. smoking alone is not going to cure mm-mm, mm-mm. whatever mental ailment that they're having at that point in time. Correct? Nah, it can't. Okay, it, it thank just, you. You know, it, it's deeper than that. You, I don't yeah. care how many how many blunts you smoke. Uh, after you come down. You still going to be sad at some point. You know what I'm saying? So, so no, it can't. Okay. Thank you. Because, I mean, you know, it's, it's still people out here in this world that, you know, want to numb themselves completely of, you know, whatever drug of choice that they, you know, choose. Uh, we'll just use marijuana in this case, right? Um, mm-hmm. And they'll smoke back to back to back to back. 
next day they still got to go to court they still got to go deal with their baby mom they still Mm got to you know i'm saying do this that and the third Mm -hmm. um folks go out there and get that help that you deserve that's what these people are getting paid to do um so with that being said right i i pulled up this report earlier um it was from i think it was like from columbia psychiatry page or something like that Mm-hmm. And um, they were saying that the uh, the adult black community is 20 percent more likely to experience serious mental health problems, uh, such as like, you know, major depressive disorder or generalized anxiety disorder. Um, yeah. Do you agree with that statement? And if so, why aren't these guys? Why aren't these folks? Get, yeah. Why aren't these guys getting the help that they deserve? So I do agree with that statement. And I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers were actually higher than that. The reason being, uh, if y'all get an opportunity, um, you should do some research uh, on this uh, concept called, and it's escaping me right now. Ah, it'll come back to me at some point. Um, but essentially what this, this concept uh, suggests is that when folks experience different childhood traumas, um, it contributes to them experiencing uh, different mental health as well as medical uh, issues later on in life. Um, so this, uh, this, these, the, the exposure to these certain um, number of different issues uh, in, in the research, they have it categorized. Like if you grow up with a, a parent that uh, abuses a substance in the home. If you grow up with a parent who has uh, been incarcerated, um, so on and so forth, several different categories, the, the, the chances of you experiencing disproportionate uh, medical and mental health issues is like 10 times higher because you've been exposed to these, these different childhood traumas. And unfortunately in this country, black and brown people are exposed to those conditions at a higher rate during childhood than that of our white counterparts. So just based on that alone, the likelihood of us having a higher rate of mental health, mental illnesses, uh, dying by suicide, uh, and then of course medical issues Mm -hmm. is a lot greater um, than what other folks are experiencing just based on those childhood experiences alone. So do you believe in generational trauma? Absolutely. Um, I I believe uh, in uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome Mm -hmm. and how uh, that has impacted um, generation after generation after generation of Black people in this country. We uh, are byproducts of that. And and kind of just looking at the, the brokenness and family dynamics that we see, right? The unhealthy practices in families. I think about my family in particular and uh, how we approach like drama. Uh, I I didn't know um, my aunt uh, had breast cancer, listen to me, until after her breast got removed. Real talk. Did not know that she had (laughs) breast cancer until after the thing got cut off. And then, there was a, a small conversation about it, but never in, nothing in depth. Um, and a part of that was them thinking like, oh, well, we don't want y'all to be worried or, or sad and so on and so forth, which I can appreciate, I understand. Yeah. But what that really points out or is a reflection of is kind of these unhealthy practices of open communication and transparency that we see within Black families. And that I think is kind of like, a byproduct of, um, of of how families have been broken in the black community over the years, and how these unhealthy practices has just became culture for so many people. Damn, that's so, real. Hold on, let, let's piggyback. Right, you said you 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 believe in like the generational trauma, right? Mm-hmm. You believe in the the um, post what was it post slavery disorder? Post traumatic post traumatic slave slavery. disorder. <clears throat> So I'm gonna play devil's advocate on this, one, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be the bad guy for a second. Let me be the bad guy. That's all so right. When we talk about our black, our black community, our black brethren, our black sisters, right? Mm-hmm. Is it not fair to say that even though we've been kicked nine times out of ten, down on the ground, down on our luck, 
we always have one that kind of prevails out of that community coming from the same environment, coming from a broken home, coming from a, a substance abuse um, home. Yeah. Is it not fair to say that sometimes we should take accountability for what's going on and rise above those obstacles and circumstances? Or is it that we can just claim that these disorders that have been newly um, newly created, mm-hmm. um, they've always been there, but they've, they've been given a term, so to speak. Right. Is it is it fair to say that if we don't rise up and can are we using those as crutches mm. or is it something that you can be classified in and this is what's holding you back or this is what you're suffering from so you can't exceed you yeah. can't excel in the in the real world. Yeah, yeah, great question. So I'm a big fan of WEB Du Bois um and he had a concept in the souls of black folks called the talented 10 um, and, and the whole idea behind the talented tenth was that there was a, a tenth of the black community that would be responsible, that would have the skill sets to pull um, the the culture out of the ashes. Um, and so, uh, as much as I love the boys, I, I struggled with that idea um, because I thought it was it was whack to um, place that type of like responsibility on the shoulder of so few. Uh, And I thought it discredited folks ability, like uh, the community's ability to rise up. Um, And so I do think that there should be some accountability uh, on our communities to to take responsibility for like how their decisions play a role in their inability to come up um so yo so yeah i i totally agree but at the same time i also think that uh some of the unfair conditions mm. have to be addressed and have to be taken into consideration when it comes to why um there's only one out of the 10 or or one a small amount of people out of the large number of the community that's able to make it it, it ain't just cuz uh niggas don't want to do nothing um, and, and, and because we, we make, we always make poor decisions or we want to be in that condition, but I think it's a deeper issue that's playing a role in why there's so few folks, uh, succeeding in that area. Um, oh, and that I think comes from just kind of like the social conditions that have been constructed <clears throat> in a way that, that does make it harder for black folks. That sounds I, respect, I, I respect that. Hello. Hell of an answer. Hell of an answer. No doubt, man. Um, shoot, I did. I think I might have had one more question for you, Drew. Okay. Um, you know, because I, I said we was going to do a 30 minute segment. Uh, this has been way past 30 minutes. Yeah, I know. I was but, thinking that. <laughs> but I mean, let's keep let's keep going. Let's keep yeah, firing, the, brother. So, let's keep firing. So check it out, right? I was doing some homework today, and um, mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to I wanted to quiz you real fast to see you oh, know, snap. if you actually knew some of your <laughs> stuff, on, right? You, you would you would give me a pop quiz. They didn't even give me I, no. I had to, bro. I had to. I'm sorry. I just got to pull. I just got to. You know what I'm saying? I got to see real fast. I got to see if you really own it. All right, all right. that's crazy, smooth. That's crazy, man. Yeah, bro. You know, I had I did the and same we, thing. We talk, and we talked and we talked before the show too. That's the crazy part. Yeah. You could have yeah, warned yeah, him a little bit, like, yeah, a bro. little hint or Boom. something. God. Hey, bro, I'm the little you. brother, dog. This is what yeah, I do. Yeah, all right, yeah. this is what I do. I got to pull the okie doke. You this know what I'm saying? True. So, so check it out. All right. Um. So, first question, right? Who is the first African American to receive his PhD in psychology? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can answer yeah. that quickly. Um, who who gave you your license? Who gave me my license? Yeah, I need I need to talk to these people. <laughs> How you don't know this, bro? Bro, we don't study the black history of mental <laughs> health. Hey man, I thought I thought I thought that was you know common knowledge. Maybe that's just me, you know, that's being you, so bro. eager to know yeah, what yeah, the hell's yeah. going on in the psychology world. Well, I'm gonna let you know anyways. All right, his all name right. is his name is Francis Cecil Sumner. Hmm. All right, Francis Cecil Sumner. He, okay. um, yeah, he's the first African American to receive his PhD in psychology and helped establish the psychology department at Howard University. Dope. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. He did, he did all that to train African American psychologists and so on mm. and so forth. Wow. All right. Um. All right. Well, shoot. I got another one. You oh, know, geez. just I just you know just want to see if you know who this <laughs> brother is. Um. So <laughs> this cat right here became the first black president of the American Psychological Association. All right. If if that doesn't have, let me give you a hint. He contributed to the case of Brown versus Board of Education oh, and the famous doll study. I know who that oh, is. Oh, I should know this. I, I should know who that know is. This. All right, Matt, you got to help me, man. I have no clue. All right, so boom. And I'm going to give you a hint. He was the first, first Black uh, Supreme Court justice. Uh, Thurgood Marshall? There we go. Well, no, y'all, both y'all wrong. I'm about to say, and, and, and I thought Thurgood was. Oh, no, nah, it's not. Nah, wait, it was, you, you said. No, he helped. He helped. He helped contribute to the case on. Oh, uh, oh on contribute. Brown yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I just seen, I just heard Brown versus Board of Education. Thurgood Marshall. It's, it's, uh, it's Dr. <laughs> Kenneth Clark. Da yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, that's yeah. him. Yep, yep. Kenneth up, uh, Bancroft Clark. Yeah, yeah. All right, brother, all right, you got some points. You got some points. All right, you might know a little something, man. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, man. I just googled it while y'all was. Oh, <laughs> nah, right here, dog, you hey, know. that's that's honesty, man. <laughs> My Google fingers is honesty, quick though. Social, you, know? you gotta be honest, man. That was real quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You gotta be honest. <laughs> all right, bro. Well, with yeah. you being a hip hop, I didn't even know he was doing that. Yeah, yeah. See, he slipped. Oh, me, my fault. I know, bro. I know. I had to pull a fast one. So check it out. So since it's hip hop and psychology, all right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. since hip hop is always going to be, you know, number one in my book, right? Because I just absolutely love that shit. Yeah. Um, give me your top three albums of all time. Oh my god. Ooh, this is the worst. That motherfucker got me like all. that last time. Ah. Top three albums of all time. Okay. I normally do top five, but I'm gonna do three and then I'll let you go. Okay, we'll do three. Um, the first one that comes to mind is a um by Outcast. Uh I, it's just so like everything that is nothing that compares to that album for me. So um Aquamanai is up there. I, my top three. Uh, damn. Top three. Aquamanai. This is the curveball. Y'all probably ain't going to fool with this one too much, but I, I feel it in my in my soul. Um, Mac Miller swimming, man. Um, really? Yeah. Swimming, swimming has been super influential. <laughs> Uh, on me surprisingly, but crazy all, all time. <laughs> we ain't talking Maybe about not within the last 10, 10 years. We're talking about all time now. Well, we, we, we ain't talking about a game. You ain't talking about practice. You talking? You ain't talking about a game. You talking about practice. You talking about all time? I mean, okay, uh, okay. So then, not maybe not all time, but definitely one that I really really love. Okay. No, don't change uh, your sure. answer. Don't change your answer. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, um, like you said, if you feeling in your spirit, that's it. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. So, Quimini, Mac Miller, swimming. Okay. I'm gonna do five just because I need more room to express all, right. all of my favorite. Uh, my dark, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy okay. by Kanye. Um, hmm, just but... a work of art. <laughs> um, uh, Tyler um, uh Reflection Eternal. Mm. Um, just you know, as a no, that was what high tech, we'll, right? Yeah, that was what high tech. But I, I want to do both of those. So reflection internal, but also Black Star together. Because mm. Black, Black Star, Star was, boy, yeah, just set the foundation of you know just who I am as a as a rapper as an artist. Um, so yeah, that's that's five. That's okay. five. That's five. I'm leaving out Black Star. I'm leaving out Common. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. It's a lot, but yeah, I'm gonna just stick with that. I respect it, man. I no, nah, I definitely Ooh. respect that, yo. That's a um, you know, some of these cats probably don't even know who Talib is, honestly. Yeah. Um, but dissect wow. does this um really amazing podcast. If y'all ever get a chance to peep it out, um, they dissect out albums line by line, verse by verse, track by track. Um, and he's done like 
the Kanye joint that I mentioned. He did uh to Pimp a Butterfly. He did mm, um, that'd be interesting. What was uh K Dot's first joint? Um oh, um Good Kid Mad City. Yeah, he did Good Kid Mad City. Just kind of giving the context of the, of the album. This it's really dope. Okay. Nah, yeah. I'll definitely check that out. Matt, you got any got, more questions? Yeah, I just got one last question, man. You know, because you know, we're talking to a lot of people. We had a lot of viewers out there, you know, we don't know what they're suffering from. How, what would you say to an individual, you know, listening right now, if they're suffering from any type of mental health or anything like that, what would you say to them to kind of go get checked out to give them that encouragement? Oh man, this is always one of the harder questions for me. Um, Cause it's so much that can be said, but a, a huge part of my work as a clinician and, and I try to like, uh, offer this in the work that I do with folks. Um, before I start saying anything, I just want to give people space to feel what they feel um, and, and to not have any shame or to feel judged or, or anything of that nature. Uh, I can't extend that to our listeners, but I can encourage them to connect with people who offer them that space. So, whoever you got in your support system, um, family, friends, um, cl clinicians, whoever, like it's so important for us to have that, that space to feel, to lean into our emotions. So connect with that person, whoever it is that allows you uh, to feel. I, I think that's a huge first step. Also like really leaning into your community. Like who is your community? Mm -hmm. Who are those people around you that like you could just be real with you don't even got to talk about what you experiencing emotionally but they make you feel welcome lean into those relationships i think that's first and foremost super important uh in terms of like how how well folks are able to manage their mental health then all the other you know uh expected suggestions connect with a therapist um uh, if if you are interested just in uh navigate having a deeper understanding of how the mind works and um how to manage your emotions i think connecting with a therapist is super important um uh, really increasing your knowledge so reading um reading is is fundamental so uh just reading about um different mental health concepts i think that's super important as well uh, and of course anchoring into your faith so uh, whether you're a believer of christianity or not or, or whatever faith tradition i think the leveraging the relationships that these faith communities offers is super important and i'm just biased to believe uh, that if i cast my cares on christ uh he will uh he will provide me with the comfort that i need to sustain won't take away my issues but i'll certainly be walking with somebody uh, while i'm going through it so i think those are just some some quick nuggets connect with a community uh, connect with folks that give you the space to process how you feel, anchor in and, into a faith community. All those things are super important when it comes to dealing with some of the stuff that we be having going on. Yeah. Appreciate so, that, brother. Appreciate yeah, that. definitely. Definitely. Well, um, look, so I want to thank you again, Drew. I know, like I said, we didn't took up a whole hour almost. Um, but you I'd know, be talking, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a preacher, so, you know. <laughs> Hey, bro, no, and and it was well needed today, man. For real, for oh, real. Yeah. You uh, you you said a lot of things that um, you know, folks need to see when it comes from somebody like you and me, right? Um, so uh, let these people know where they can uh contact you at, man. I mean, like you said, you know, you got the whole cipher program. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, get that out there one more time. Let these people know where they can follow you at. For Shout sure, out the so, podcast too, brother. Shout yeah, out the yeah, definitely. So. Um, I'm, I have a website. You can connect with me on uh, andrewwalkers.net. And that just kind of shows my uh, clinician slash pastor stuff. It also features uh, my Cypher um, content. Uh, so you can find me there. You can follow me on Instagram. I am Pastor Drew. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about everything that's going on uh, on my Instagram account. Uh, you also catch me on Facebook, Andrew Watkins. Just type it in. It'll probably be a lot more white guys. Just scroll down a little bit, and then you'll find me. Uh, and then, of course, you can check us out on emmanuelnc.net. Uh, That's uh, the uh, website for my church uh, where uh, my pastor and myself 
are leading the charge and carrying most of the preaching responsibilities. So uh, if you're interested in hearing uh, some solid biblical content, you can catch me on there. Uh, and of course, the Chop It Up Pie, you can catch us uh, on Instagram as well. Uh, Chop It Up Pie uh, is where we feature a lot of our content. But then of course you can follow us on uh, app, any any place where podcasts are features, uh, other than Spotify, I don't know if we're on there yet, but definitely on Apple Podcasts um, and, and whatever else is floating around out there. The Chop It Up Podcast, you could catch us on there talking crazy and ratchet. Um, so we like all that, all that stuff. <laughs> got to keep the gangster. Somebody got to do it. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. you know, you know. <laughs> cold, cold switch sometimes, but we got to keep it real all the time. For sure, for sure. Yeah, no doubt, man. Well, look, man, uh, definitely appreciate you being on here. Um, appreciate you, brother. No doubt. Thank y'all for having me, man. Shout out to y'all for the podcast, um, doing your thing. I, I love the content, and, and uh, I know y'all some solid guys, so subscribe to this podcast. You hear That's me? right, it's, people. It's crazy. It's, it. dope. it's amazing. Hit um, that button. I ain't going to say it no more. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then listeners, check us out. We on Anchor and Spotify. You know, Step Into the Light, Step Into the Mic podcast. We just updated that. So hey, check us out. On up. Check us out. Y'all out, out here. Y'all out here. We trying to make some moves now. We trying. We, we officially published. Published. Live. Right. Check us out. All right. All right, people. Y'all take it easy. One love. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right.